Sup and good day gamers, this is a formal bust here with Dark Souls 2, a review. Before we get into that, of course, my sponsor, your sponsor, H2O everybody, drink up or die. Okay, let's get into the main menu. There is new game, which you, you start a new game. Uh, I should say before we get into this, um, of course, Dark Souls, it was developed by FromSoft Incorporated and published by Bandai Namco. Uh, the official site calls this game an RPG. Okay, sure. Uh, Steam is a little bit more accurate. Calls it a Souls-like, which I don't know how descriptive that is for a Dark Souls game. But it also calls it an RPG, Dark Fantasy, and uh, Difficult and Action. Difficult, not a game genre, but okay. Um, personally, I would call this an action-adventure game, and it is definitely slightly an RPG. You can get into the RPG if you want. This game is light on story. Um, there's... Plenty of lore and background information about the world, but not a lot of story. Okay, like I said, main menu, new game, continue, which opens up all your saves. As you can see, these top three are probably about, you know, probably from the first year of the game being out, me playing the game over about a year or so. And these last two are from the past couple weeks. Um, we'll probably load, we'll, tar we'll load targets in a second. Um, go online, uh, I'm gonna stick offline for this uh, review. I have played plenty of online, uh, mostly co-op, not a lot of uh, PvP, though. Uh, although it is forced upon you sometimes. You can't really opt in or out of PvP in this game. Uh, here, these are the only settings in the main menu. You got video settings. Uh, you can choose window, full screen, that's all you get, resolution, and to auto-detect best render settings. Uh, overall settings, and I think I have... Yeah, all these are on high. The highest settings they can be motion blur I, I i haven't looked into motion blur at all i don't know why there's a different motion blur for your camera and your mo uh standard motion blur but whatever yeah um enable yep yeah, pretty 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 basic uh settings on the main menu so uh now we'll revert all right and of course you can quit the game uh let's just get into the game and there's some more settings in the game once you load inside Okay, uh, here's fine, we can show this here. Um, this is your in-game menu, press start, I believe? Yeah, start. Um, everything, the four left ones are for, like, in-game stuff. Uh, this Dark Souls, you don't need a signed soapstone. You can just, you know, drop messages wherever you like if you pull up the menu. Alright, key bindings. These are only key bindings that affect the keyboard. I would definitely suggest playing this game with a controller of some sort, either that be an Xbox controller or a you know, PlayStation controller. Um, you can, tr I mean, you can play on keyboard and mouse. It's just a lot more difficult in my opinion. Uh, video settings is the same from the main menu of the game. Nothing new there. And you have game options. Uh, flipping accesses and such, camera sensitivity, vibration in the controller. Uh, I do like the jump controls giving you the option uh, between, you know, clicking the left stick as you're running or double clicking B as you're already running. Uh, voice chat and all that doesn't matter right now because we're offline, and this is all your sound options. You just have three sliders for music, sound effect, and voice. Um, overall, I'd say sound in the game is fine. Uh, the only issue I have is during boss cutscenes, uh, when you enter the boss arenas, they are sometimes very, very loud uh, compared to the rest of the game, and you know, if you're not expecting them, can throw you off guard. Screen options. We got blood in here, subtitles in here, HUD in here. Uh, yeah, always display or always hide and hide automatically. I guess hide automatically, I believe. Yes, 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 hide automatically. If you just, you know, aren't doing anything, it'll go away. Uh, I believe it's just movement. Um, it doesn't affect it either, but it might. Yes, yes, it slowly starts to just go away. That's nice. If you like that. Uh, let's turn that back on, though. And brightness. Mine's all the way up because I'm in windowed mode. And for some reason, windowed mode on my computer. Things are very dark. All right. General overview. I mean, it's a Souls game. You know? What what, what do you want me to say? It's a Souls game. Uh, this Souls game is a little bit different from the other Souls games you've played before. 
but not in so much that they got rid of, you know, major things in the game. Albert. Ooh! That's one frustrating thing in the game. Uh, we'll get into that later. But, it's a Souls game. You attack enemies. The common, the standard gameplay loop is you go into an area, you fight enemies, and you keep on fighting enemies until you either die or get to a boss room where you have to defeat the boss to either advance um, in the storyline or advance in the map. You don't always do both of those, but sometimes you do both. There we go. And let me get the drop. Can I? Oh, there he is. Very good. Don't need to get it, but, you know, always nice to get drops on enemies and get some extra damage done. Alright, we're going to go to the starting area. Well, the starting area is the hub area. Um, this game, unlike Dark Souls 1, you do not have a uh, cinematic between the starting area and the hub area. In fact, uh, you can see that split in the rock up there, that's the starting area. Uh, past it, you know, well, in there, there's multiple weak bosses, and there's actually, we will go to the starting area, because there is one interesting thing in this game that they added that I think was very, very helpful for players. Um, most Dark Souls games, you, that's another branching off path from the hub area, not interested right now. Most Dark Souls games, you choose your sex or whatever, uh, you know, m uh, character model you want, whether that be male or female, and you're stuck with it for the game. Dark Souls 2, they were nice, and in the hub area, not the hub, well, I'm going to include it in the hub area just because it is in here, it's a very short walk away. But in here, in things betwixt, as they call it, uh, up here, up here you can see it. But yeah, so start of the game, you pick your character model, let me say you just want to change. Maybe you like how a certain armor looks on a female character model compared to a male character model, or vice versa. You can climb in that coffin over there. Uh, climbing in that coffin will do nothing in the game other than changing your character model to the opposite gender. So, currently I'm a male character. If I hop in that coffin, I will become a, well, get a female character model instead. Now it is past a somewhat difficult, you know, enemy, but not impossible. Most, most dark, most dark souls, that's a way to describe it. Difficult enemy, not impossible to defeat though. All right, we're gonna go back to the hub area because one of the nice things about having a hub area, oh, while we're in here, there's one graphical thing I do not like about this game. I mean, you know, this game came out in, I believe, 2014, so it hasn't aged great, um, but one thing I dislike is, I have some auroras on my character. Let's get those off. They gave your character a little uh, moving light that goes with him, your, there's a, aura of light that's always around your character. To me, it just kind of makes your character look a little off in the uh, world, like he's out of place. But it is more helpful in dark areas to see where you're walking. Um, I don't think there's too many super dark areas in this game. Nothing like Tomb of the, Un uh, Tomb of the Unknown Giant, I believe. Oh no, Tomb of the Giants, not the Unknown Giant. Just Tomb of the Giants and Dark Souls 1, where you literally could just see about that far in front of you, to that wall. Um... So, I like that they put it in, but also you do look a little off. And I know it's what bothers me, because NPCs look fine to me. You know? And when I get near them, they look a little too whited out. I don't think it would have been such an option, but uh, or such an issue for me, but it seems they used a pure white light around your character. Whereas, pretty much all other sources of light in the game, even the sun, have either a warm or a cool hue to them that fits with the environment instead of just a pure white uh, light like is on, around my character right now. And it's always there. It doesn't go away or come back. It's always there. Uh, yeah, you can see it on the ground as I walk around. Okay. Hub area. What issue do I have with the hub area? <laughs> it's fine. It's a rather large hub area. There's places that are locked behind doors. NPCs show up as you meet them in the world and invite them. Well, you exhaust their dialogue. You usually don't invite them back here. Um, that's more of a Dark Souls 3 thing. But yes, in Dark Souls 2, you just talk to them, exhaust their dialogue, or with some merchants, you have to buy stuff from them, and eventually they'll come back here. 
but most NPCs will come back here. I do not believe Gavlon does, which is annoying, because he's the one... Uh, I think he's one of, or the only NPC in this game that will buy items from you uh, that you do not, do not need for souls, so that's kind of annoying. I wish I could get him here. You might be able to. Like I said, it's been a while since I, you know, beat this game, and, you know, in the past two weeks I've only gotten seven hours into the game in both playthroughs, so... You might be able to get Gavilon here. Don't take my word on that. What's my issue with the hub? Well, when you first get here, um, you only have two paths you can choose from. You can go this way into the Forest of Fallen Giants, I believe. Or you can go through this little tunnel over there, which initially its light is not lit up. And it will take you to... Oh, what is the place? Oh, man. It's going to kill me. Where is it? Ah, Hyde's Tower of Flame. It'll take you over there. Um, you're supposed to go to Forest to Fallen Giants first, but if, you know, if you played a Dark Souls game before, it really doesn't matter which way you go. Um, just matters the difficulty of enemies you will face initially in the game. Other issues I have with this, I mean, the hub does eventually spread out to where that little, you know, right above my head, that little overgrown pathway does lead to another area as well that forks into three different pathways. You have the hole in the ground over there uh, with some ladders in it that you you can theoretically go in there whenever you want to, but the fall damage will most likely kill you um, if you drop. Yeah, especially initially if you drop, you will die. But once you get ladders and everything, you can get down there and dropping down isn't too horrible. And another path opens up that direction as well. So in total, you eventually get a lot of different pathways sprawling out from here. My issue with them is, unlike in Dark Souls 1, and uh, to a lesser extent in Dark Souls 3, but it's, it still happened in Dark Souls 3, these paths aren't really interconnected. There's a couple of... Um, Lost Bastille is a good point of order, where there's cutscenes to get to it. I wouldn't call that interconnected. The map isn't overlapping itself. The map is just... The, the game was just like, oh yeah, you can get from here to here. Which really isn't an issue when, from the start of the game, you can travel to any bonfire you've discovered. Another issue at the start of the game is, like in all the other Souls games, you have healing with Estus Flasks. Use the X. Chug, chug your little Capri Sun. No, or sorry, Sunny D. Not Capri Sun. Get out of here, Capri Sun. It's Sunny D. Chug your Sunny D, get health back. That's great. You start the game with only one, though. And... The way to get more of them, if I have them in my inventory, do not think I do because I've discovered all of them and used all of them, you get Estus Flask shards. These shards will give you an additional use of your Estus Flask, but it takes about eh, four to five hours in the game to get five Estus Flask charges, which I would say five is what you, you know, should be given at the beginning of any Souls game. Which they kind of fix that in 3. Um, although in 3 you do have Ash and Estus Flasks and... Uh, I don't even know what they call... I, uh, I forget what they call the regular Estus Flasks. But yeah. So this game, you kind of have to early on rely on what, what they call uh, life gems in this game. Uh, what, what, how do they describe them? Small stone made of crystallized souls gradually restores a small amount of HP. Uh, yeah, yeah. So... It will. The, the good thing about life gems is they restore health over time, not as long as the ring I currently have equipped, which will restore uh, health over time, but very slowly. Life gems will restore it in probably you know 20, 30 seconds. Their full charge, if that. Um, so yeah, early on, gotta gotta rely on life gems. Eventually, you get Estus flasks, and they're just they give you bulk health um, regeneration with no overtime benefit. Okay. Uh, yes. Uh, I think I've said everything I want to on the quality of the game. Oh, like in all Souls games, you're not going to find story. The story you get, you're going to find on these souls. So this is a boss soul that I have not used yet. And, you know, it kind of tells you a little bit of the boss that you defeated. The elaborate stone statues on the Belfry mysteriously came to life. Use the... Okay, that's not a lot. Uh, Guardian Dragon Soul. Do the, gar, do the dragons watch over the land of their own will? Or are they in the grip of one of Aldia's spells? So, 
they don't really tell you the story of the game. They give you lore and some information of the uh, either the boss you defeated and or the uh, area in which the boss soul was got, was uh, recovered from. So and like Elizabeth mushroom, this is a good one. Uh, specially create a treated dried mushroom cre creates a euphoric sensation when ingested. And restores a large amount of HP over time. Saint Elizabeth devoted her life to helping the needy by concocting medicine and potions. It's thought her great virtue was matched only by her sublime beauty. But who can say now? Well, if you played Dark Souls 1, you know Elizabeth. She's, she was a mushroom. <laughs> she was a mushroom. Um, so it's rather funny that they have Elizabeth mushrooms in this game for you to eat. Because questionable whether you're eating her descendants or not. But yes, uh, let's get into the gameplay loop of this game. It's like many other Souls games in that you fight enemies. You fight enemies. No, no, we're gonna... Got one more thing to say on level design. Uh, where is Sinner's Rise here? Other issue with level design, other than there not being a whole lot of interconnectedness in the game, is that you have some bonfires that are known as resting places that spawn you right next to enemies. This is slightly problematic if you were expecting, you know, to uh, either, you know, spawn in here and recover souls or, you know, get some respite before you move on. No, immediately fight some enemies. There's also other times where bonfires will just be right next to each other. Uh, where is it? I think it's Aldia's Keep. There's a bonfire. Uh, Aldia's Keep. I haven't even discovered it, so... Our ritual site might be it. Oh no, yeah, this is... Yeah. So this bonfire is here, which is kind of in the basement. There's enemies and... I believe poison might be... Some other stuff. And you go right up in here. Uh, let's see if we can. I can just show you where this leads. I don't, I don't want to get into a big fight here. There's a lot of enemies around here. Yeah, this is the main hall of this area. You enter down there. That'll be important to remember. Now, granted, this bonfire is behind a hidden wall or a loose area wall. No, I'll just keep. Ah, yes, four garden. That big door I just showed you that was down that large hall. This uh, garden area is right outside that door. Literally right outside. There's the entrance, up there. Not very far whatsoever. Yeah, I don't know why or, you know, how they decided their bonfire placements in this game. But yes, they just, yeah, some of them are very questionable. Yeah. Straight ahead, you have to go up some stairs, but he's, it's down that hallway. Dark Souls 3, I'd say, did not fully return to the feeling of Dark Souls 1. Dark Souls 1, very much, every time you got to a bonfire, you, were like, you pretty much either felt, oh my god, I finally got here, I don't know how I got here, you know, finally some respite, or you felt like, you know, it was well-earned and, you know, oh, this is an interesting place I can come back to repeatedly. Oh, I know where we can go. I haven't discovered a bonfire here yet. Is it? Yeah, it's down here. Okay. So yeah, the gameplay loop. What do you do? You fight enemies. You're gonna collect their souls, and use their souls either to purchase items from vendors, or to level yourself up eventually. Now this is fine and dandy. You will eventually get to boss arenas, where you will have to fight a boss. You enter a fog wall, and you have to kill the boss or die. Uh, if you die, either whether it be a boss... Oh, man. Do I have a... Yeah, there. I can drop down over here. Show you what happens when you die. If you do die, like this... Oh. You can get down to this area later. It's just... Kind of gotta go out there and down and in. It's, 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 a, whole, it's a whole thing to get down there. What happens when you die? You lose all your souls, and you become, uh, well, you progress on hollowing. Unlike in Dark Souls 3 and Dark Souls 1, where hollowing was a, uh, 
binary thing. You were either hollow or you won't, or you weren't hollow. Every time you die, you... Well, firstly, you lose your human appearance, and if you see my health bar has gone down, my maximum HP has gone down a little bit. Now, the only way to fix hollowing is to use what they call uh, human effigies in this game. Other games you could use uh, humanities, which I much prefer the humanity system in the games because humanities in Dark Souls 1 and Dark Souls 3 will com will completely heal your health as well as reversing hollowing. This game, if you use a human effigy, it reverses your hollowing and restores your maximum HP. It does not heal you uh, to maximum health like, human, uh, like humanities do in the other games. So that's... It's a small detail, it's not a big one, it's, it's a slight annoyance. Oh wow, I haven't even opened this door. Okay. Uh, no I haven't. This is... There's doors and, and gates in this game you can open that then either close immediately after you go through. Uh, like there's some heavy iron gates that once you go through them, they will close after you. And then there is some doors that once you go through will close after you rest at a bonfire making you question your sanity at times as to whether or not you've been through a doorway yet or not. So yeah, that's the whole point of the game. You're going to explore the world, you're going to kill enemies, and you're going to find bonfires that allow you to more easily explore the world and get to bosses. Oh boy. Yes. I can pretty much. Okay, cool. Now, to accomplish this fighting and exploring, you have your stats, which uh, we're going to look at stats back at the em uh, with the Emerald Herald, who is the uh, bonfire keeper of this world. Oh, I can just... Uh, Homeward Bones. There there's multiple items that return you to bonfires. The feather item is nice because it can be reused multiple times. Black leather armor. Okay, yeah. yeah. Loading screens will give you some info on the game as well. Or the lore of the game and the items you can find in the game. They're usually more mundane items. They usually aren't like, you know, souls of bosses or anything. Those are usually kept, you know, hidden until you defeat the boss. So stats. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, level up. Okay, so I can't afford a level, but, and if, I do like in Dark Souls 2, you can press, uh, in most menus, you can press select and go to each, you know, icon and it will tell you what it is. So you have your level, overall attribute, uh, overall attribute strength, so all of these pretty much added up, your souls, your required souls to level up, vigor determines HP, mostly, it also, uh, increases your petrify resist to level it up. Endurance, and an attribute that determines your overall stamina. Well, well, actually, I can tell you in these. So, endurance affects stamina, and I think, yeah, no matter what you level up in the game, you'll get a little bit of HP, but Vigor will increase it the most. But all of these affect multiple stats, which is nice to see, instead of just doing one thing. Allows for more, uh, more versatility, and uh, gives you rewards for leveling things up, other than just, you know, Oh, you have more health or you have more endurance. Uh, endurance increases your stamina, physical defense, and poise. Vitality mostly increases your equip load, also your physical defense, poison resist. Some of these double up on stuff. Like you'll notice endurance and vitality both increase physical defense, and like I said, everything increases health. Attunement gives you attunement slots and increases your casting speed, your curse resist, and your agility, which agility... Yes, ease of evasion and other actions. So like... Pretty much any action you make in the game will be increased by agility. Uh, drinking a uh, Estus flask or whatever will, you know, be a little bit quicker. It's not much, uh, but it is a little bit. Strength, uh, HP, attack, strength, physical defense, dexterity, dex attack, poison, uh, poison bonus, bleed bonus, physical defense, adaptability. This is new, and I do not believe. No, this is not in Dark Souls 3. Um, raises various attributes to ensure one's survival, boosts agility and various resistances. So, yep, affects pretty much all of your, you know, 
uh, what are they called? S uh, status uh, resistances. All these are statuses you can get put on you, and fairly enough, you can put on other enemies, and also increases agility and poise. Very good to see adaptability in the game. They had a uh, resistance in Dark Souls 3, uh, sorry, Dark Souls 1. Dark Souls 3 has neither adaptability nor resistance. Oh, it also increases your poison bonus, good to know. Um, so this is good, um, kind of useful for everybody, especially with that agility bonus. Intelligence, so you got magic fire, dark defense, and ma uh, magic fire and dark bonuses, and your casting speed. Faith, cast speed as well as uh, bleed bonus, fire bonus, lightning bonus, dark bonus, and the same resistances. Those are your stats in the game. Uh, each one will, you know, take an exponential amount of souls to level up every time you level up once. My only issue with stats in this game would be with vitality. It's not really with vitality, it's more with equipment load and how stamina regeneration is treated. So, vitality. You want a high vitality so you can carry more stuff. Why is that an issue? Well, this whole game favors people who use um, not a lot of equipment and more dex-based weapons because... Equip load. Nope. Yes, wait. Wait of the item. Hold on, sorry. Ah, player stats. Player info. Here it is. No, where is it? Ah, it's got to be player stats. Okay. Equip load. Oh, right there. Right below stamina. I'm blind. Uh, equip load, which is affected by your vitality. Maximum weight that can be equipped. Movement slows as your uh, equipped load approaches maximum. That doesn't really tell you a whole lot about everything this mechanic does, uh, but you can see my equip load in the bottom right corner, right above my souls. I'm right now carrying 44 weight out of 68.5 weight, which uh, equals about which equals 64.3 percent of my total equip load. And we'll take off my rings real quick. Give me a little bit of my equip load back, um, and to show you the main thing. So, I'm, you know, very heavy knight in this game. I got a shield, I got a big sword. I should be able to take down enemies pretty easily, right? Yes and no. As you expend stamina, whether it be through rolling or attacking, you then have to wait for it to recharge. Okay, that recharge isn't too horrible, but it increases very, very quickly if I wear nothing. You'll also notice that lowering my equip load increases my roll distance, which in turn increases uh, my iframes. Every time you roll in the game, you get uh, in invincibility frames, where say an enemy goes to attack me, if I roll at the right time and their attack, even if their attack makes contact with my rolling model in the middle of you know a swipe that you know should hit me, it won't. I am invincible for these couple roll, a uh, couple uh, frames. Some people have really looked into this and broken down the game logic behind it and how many frames you get for, you know, each equipment load for a uh, threshold. I find it rather annoying, um, especially given all the equipment you have. Um, you know, why would I carry around a heavy shield if I'm just going to be rolling a lot to avoid damage? Because the only ways to avoid damage in this game are either to roll out of the way, which, you know, pretty much gives you no damage dealt to you whatsoever, I mean, there's some AoE attacks that you can roll through that will then, you know, cause you to take a little bit of damage at the end of the roll after the AoE is still affecting you, or affecting the area. But, the other ways to uh, reduce damage is either to wear armor that, you know, absorbs any damage dealt to you whatever, whatsoever, or you can, I'm wearing all the stuff, I believe, or you can block. Now, blocking's great and all, but... If someone, uh, we need to go where there are enemies, sorry. But when you block, you will take, uh, your stamina will drain a little bit based on the stability of your shield. Um, and unlike in other games where you pretty much get a point of stability for every increase uh, reinforcement level you do on your shields, uh, that's not so in this game. The larger shields, yes, you do get more stamina, or s more stability. Let's see if we can actually show stability. Ah, yeah, here it is. 
These are all your different resistances. Uh, this is 100% physical reduction, 55 magic, and you get bonuses based on your stats. They're not much for the reductions. They're more for damage dealing. Stability. Reduces consumption of stamina when taking attacks. So this shield will block 100, all, all, all physical damage, but it will not block all dark damage and whatsoever. So yes, cost me a little bit of stamina with this big shield to block an attack. Not too bad. So this game is more about stamina regeneration, because you're going to spend it anyway, than it is really about uh, your total stamina that you have on your character at any point in time. So yeah, that's my whole issue with rolling and equip load being tied to how quickly your stamina regenerates. Now, to be fair, there are this ring, which raises stamina recovery speed that you can get pretty early on, as well as, where is it? Ring of Restoration, which you also get very early on after I believe the first, one of the first boss fights. One of the bosses in this area gives you a key, you can get uh, the Ring of Restoration. So this is kind of, you know, direly needed if you're gonna play a tank build or a, you know, knight build. Okay, come on. If you're gonna play a knight build, you really need these rings. Otherwise, you're gonna be using a lot more healing than a rolling character would. The other issue I have... Oh! With, uh rolling and all of this is that most shields do not have a hundred most shields do not have a hundred percent uh damage reduction on several or multiple different damage types mostly you're gonna find shields that have a hundred percent resistance to physical damage and not so much to the other forms of damage so in that case you're encouraged to kind of roll when fighting enemies that, you know, deal fire damage or lightning damage or whatever have you. You haven't come this way. It's impressive. I thought I had. So, anytime you fight enemies that... Yeah, like I said. Anytime you fight enemies that do not have... That deal physical damage, you're usually okay with the shield. But, if they're going to deal anything other than physical damage, you're probably not going to be able to use your shield very effectively. It'll still block most of the damage, and most attacks are not purely, unless, you know, spell casting, which I do have some spell casting here. Unless it's a spell caster, your shield is gonna absorb most of the damage. Oh, where is... Yeah, it's fine. Now, I, I do like magic in this game. Um, you can actually, unlike in Dark Souls 1, you can restore your magic, uh, sorry, your spell uses, it calls it. So there are items in the game that you can pick up that restore spell uses, and also there's Crimson Water and Rogue Water, which both restores HP and spell uses. So unlike in Dark Souls 1, you can have your main damage dealing be a, you know, magic spells. Very nice to see. Although I do prefer the system they have in Dark Souls 3, where you have to kind of choose if you're going to be more health-restoring character or you're going to be more of a magic-restoring character with Estus Flasks. Okay, so I've used quite a bit of my magic. Let me just slightly restore. Yep, get 8 back. So that's nice. You can play this game as a spellcaster and not have to worry, really, like in Dark Souls 1, about running out of magic and being kind of useless with your magic spells, or lack thereof now. Or Dark Souls 3 having to decide which ones you're going to use. Rather, rather you know, are you going to be a heal, heal? Are you going to be able to heal yourself, or are you going to be able to restore your magic? So yeah, overall, okay game. There's some interesting quirks to the game. Um, you can kind of, you know, I would call this the uh, Bloodborne or Sekiro, you know, Dark Souls, where you're more rewarded for rolling and using lighter weapons and lighter equipment. 
even though you have, a, you know, the option to use heavier equipment, you are definitely, the game rewards you for not doing that. Which I find frustrating, because they give you the option to use it. Alright, we're going to move on to my last gripe of this game, uh, and the biggest one, really. So matchmaking in all other Dark Souls games is based off of your level. Overall, which, you know, you can control by what you level up here. This is where you get into Dark Souls 1 and Dark Souls 3, the builds. Uh, this is very important Dark Souls 1 because the community decided, kind of as a whole, that you would stop leveling at 150 or 120, I believe. But, you know, the community decided we'll stop at a certain level and we can all still matchmake. Whether you're in New Game Plus, whichever version of that you're in, you can theoretically go on to as many New Game Pluses as you want. But you would still be able to matchmake with other people because everyone's at, you know a certain level or very close to within that. Now, Dark Souls 2 goes off of soul memory, which is, its description is not helpful whatsoever to any players. Souls that once dwelled within the flesh will always remain in memory. Could this be a blessing or a curse? I do wonder if the, if FromSoft knew what they were talking about and were putting that line in there as kind of like, we don't know, will it work? Find out. Uh, how this actually works is there's 45 or 46 different ranks, and depending on the item you're using for matchmaking, you can, you know, go plus or minus a few ranks. Oh, I get a level. You can go plus or minus a few ranks uh, depending on which soul item you use. So I believe, yes, white sign so soapstone. Yeah, it doesn't say. Yeah, it doesn't say, but this has the furthest range. Um, where I believe you can go three ranks down and three ranks up. Of course, you know, the wiki has this, so refer to that for accurate. But it has the largest span of different ranks you can matchmake with. Small white sign soapstone works the same, but there's the, the range of ranks that you can matchmake with, with that is less. Okay. So the issue with these ranks that I think is they seem completely arbitrary. The first five are like about 10,000 souls each, so, you know, by the end of it, you're at 50,000, you know? After that, you know, it's a 10,000, and it goes on and on and on. Uh, for a while, it's 10,000 each rank, and then it gets to 25,000 each rank. And then eventually you get up into the final one is literally... Oh, what is it? I think it's like 250 million to 999 million. Like, anyone in there is in the same rank. And the rank below that is like 100 million. It's, it's ridiculous. So me being at, what is this, 100? Yeah, I'm almost at 2 million. I'm kind of in the middle of the ranking system. Even though I'm right outside the final, like, you know, progression-wise, I'm right outside the final boss room. If I wanted to do the boss right now, I could. That seems fine. But in New Game Plus, I'm going to be getting a lot more souls. And it'll be a lot harder for me to matchmake with people. Now, they did add in something to fix this. There is a ring in the game. I forget the name of it. But uh, the ring, you first have to equip it. And all this ring does... Yeah, I don't have it. Looks like a little cup on the end of your, on, on the end of your finger. This ring, all it does is absorb every single soul that you would absorb otherwise. So, if you want to buy any more items or level up, you have to take the ring off, which increases your soul memory, which then you can get put into a different rank. So, it's more of a stopgap measure. It doesn't actually fix the problem that the game has with matchmaking. But, they at least, you know, they at least tried. They at least tried to fix it. You know, they didn't actually fix it, but they attempted to. So, you know, give them points for trying, I guess. We're just going to get to... It should be right around the corner. Nope, wrong corner. Although, I do have to pick up some items. Uh, oh, chest. Chest. Thought it was a body. So yeah, matchmaking is kind of out of your hands unless you're really gonna, you know, focus on a build and then not use souls in the game ever again, which is kind of impractical. Especially, like I said, if you're doing a spellcaster build who actually needs these items, or these and or these items, 
to actually, you know, use your spell casting repeatedly without running dry. Like I said, they fixed some things in the game, and they also, you know, in doing so, didn't fix some other game things in the game. Oh, if you're a Souls player, you're probably wondering where the luck stat is. Usually there's a luck uh, attribute here, which you can level up in Dark Souls 1 and 3. It's not here. Um, it still You still have a luck stat, because there is a ring. Yeah, I don't need the King's Ring. Yeah, Covetous Gold Servant Ring. Fallen foes are more likely to drop items. This increases your luck. It does not, you, you know. Doesn't tell you how much it increases your luck by, but it does. Um, I believe it's it's pretty good, you know. You can go through an area, and about every fourth or fifth enemy will drop an item. So it does work. It just you know. Okay, heard a body drop, but do not see a body. Oh yeah, so this is fun. I don't know if you can hear the body drop, but bodies will despawn after a while after you've killed them, and if you re-enter the area, the body will respawn, which causes it, since it's dead, to immediately fall to the ground and make a loud thump noise, so you know, you know when the bodies are falling, you know? It's just a funny quirk of the game, not an issue with the game at all, and I don't, I haven't seen it affect frame rate. So yeah, I would say if you're interested in Dark Souls and you... I'd say the only reason to play this game is if you like Sekira and Bloodborne and want a weird bastardization of uh, especially Bloodborne uh, and Dark Souls uh, game mechanics kind of mixed in together. This this is your Dark Souls game if you, you know, love to roll around and fight stuff. Personally, I'm more of a knight build, so this game really isn't for me. I have beaten it. Uh, it's a fine game to play, but, you know... I'm just not interested in it for long-term multiplayer, which is what a lot of people play Dark Souls for, and cooperation, of course. Jolly, good old jolly cooperation. Uh, yeah. I think that's all I have to say about this game. Uh, oh, boss fights. So there are some boss fights. Uh, let me see if I can travel to one. This is it. Hidden chamber. We can go here. This will show you what I'm talking about with boss fights. Usually in Dark Souls, when you defeat a boss, you get rewarded not just with souls and the soul of the boss, you know, to actually use for whatever you want to use it for, but you also get rewarded. Oh, let me just, because I might need this rather quickly. It's been a while since I was in this area, so I don't remember exactly. Yeah, there's poisoning effect. So this is a boss chamber. There's a fog wall you would enter and go into here. And after you beat the boss, what do you do? Well, it's a dead end, I believe. Oh, there it is. Yep, this is the boss arena. And once in here and after you defeat the boss, there's nowhere to go. It's the end of the line. Like I said, those uh, different areas you can leave uh, Medjula from all end pretty much in boss chambers. And once they're ended, you can't really do anything. Like I said, this is a dead end. You can use this area to farm, you know? Like, it is convenient having this opened up area so you can go that way and farm uh, the enemies out there. But, yeah, usually when you defeat a boss, you usually get its soul, get some souls from it, and are rewarded with more exploration area. Not so in a lot of Dark Souls, uh bosses, especially the main bosses in the game that you have to defeat. I mean, there's tons of smaller bosses that you fight and actually do open up more explorable areas, but to me in Dark Souls, there seems to be a lot more that you defeat and you get to a dead end like this. And there's nowhere else to go. You're just great. That, that was a great boss. Let me, you know, backtrack and find out where my next location to go is. Go back to Majula. But yeah, I mean, overall, solid game. It runs. There's no game-breaking bugs that I'm aware of. Um, you can get, you know, there's some funny stuff you can get into in PvP and so on. But solid game, just 
if you're going to play it, you really need to understand, especially if you're doing PvP, you really need to understand how the game works in relation to soul memory, and more, and also less so, but as importantly, I think, equipment load and stamina region. All right, that's pretty much all I have to say on this game. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, until next time, gamers, take care of yourselves and drink some H2O out there.